There have been numerous occasions that I've encountered things and it felt like a message was being conveyed to me or that God was prompting me to do something at that precise moment. I want to explain the real reason why you should take these nighttime awakenings seriously, whether it's at 3 a.m. or any other time. I urge you to pay close attention because there's a deeper meaning to it. Before we embark on this enlightening journey, let's remember this fundamental truth. The world around us is not solely a product of chance. There's a spiritual dimension to everything we encounter. Whether it's the success we achieve or the challenges we face, spiritual forces are often at play, orchestrating events in ways we may not fully comprehend. So, when you find yourself repeatedly awakening during the stillness of the night, whether it's at 1 a.m. or the mysterious hour of 3 a.m., there is undoubtedly a profound spiritual significance behind it. It's time to unveil the reasons that lurk in the shadows, to understand what this mystical awakening truly means. Now, you may be wondering, what could possibly be happening at 3 a.m.? To shed light on this, let me share a parable, a story that beautifully illustrates why delving into the spiritual realm is not only essential, but transformative. Once upon a time in a quiet village, there lived a diligent gardener named Sarah. Sarah possessed an uncanny ability to make her garden bloom like no other. Her flowers were vibrant, her trees bore the juiciest fruits, and her vegetables were the envy of the entire village. One moonless night, Sarah awoke suddenly, her heart racing. It was 3 a.m. and the world was cloaked in darkness. Rather than ignoring the strange awakening, she followed her instincts. Armed with a lantern, she ventured into the garden, guided by an inexplicable force. As she wandered through her garden, Sarah discovered something extraordinary. Her beloved plants, usually asleep at this hour, were bathed in a soft, ethereal glow. It was as if the heavens themselves were tending to her garden. She watched in awe as her flowers unfurled their petals. Her trees rustled with newfound life and her vegetables glistened with radiant aura. In that moment, Sarah realized the profound truth. At 3 a.m., a sacred connection between heaven and earth unfurled. It was a time when the veil between the physical and the spiritual world grew thin, allowing heavenly blessings to descend upon the receptive. Just like Sarah's garden, your nighttime awakenings at 3 a.m. are an opportunity for divine intervention. It's when God wakes you up to converse with your soul, to infuse you with wisdom, and to guide you on a path. It's a call to prayer, a chance to seek His presence and receive the spiritual nourishment your soul craves. In these sacred moments, embrace the silence and listen to the whispers of your heart. Let the stillness of the night be your sanctuary, a place where you can commune with the divine. Embrace the wakefulness as a gift for it's during these hours that your spirit is most receptive to God's guidance. Now, when you pray to God, you're conversing with the creator of the universe, the great I Am. Doesn't it make sense that you too should make a sacrifice when you enter His presence? Waking up at 3 a.m. to pray is your way of saying, Lord, I value being in your presence more than my slumber. I am devoted to you, committed to our relationship, it's a tangible act of love and commitment. At 3 a.m., the entire world is in a state of deep slumber, and even the spiritual realm rests in quietude. This is the hour when you can effortlessly connect with the Spirit of God. Your worship ascends to His altar like a fragrant offering, unhindered by the distractions of the waking world or the influence of evil spirits. Moreover, 3 a.m. is a time when you find yourself alone with God. It's during these hours of stillness that you can hear His still small voice with unparalleled clarity. Your prayers and worship during this sacred time will cause your spiritual life to flourish. You'll dive deeper into a profound relationship with God, knowing Him more intimately than ever before. And here's the beautiful part. God loves it. He's not just waiting for you to wake up. 
he's eagerly anticipating your arrival, even before you open your eyes. No need for an alarm clock, because he will wake you up with his gentle touch and loving presence. It's an exquisite experience that will fill your heart with warmth and peace. In the stillness of 3 a.m., you'll discover a connection with God that transcends the ordinary. It's a time for your soul to commune with the divine, for your spirit to soar in His presence. So the next time you find yourself awakened at 3 a.m., know that it's an invitation from the Almighty Himself. Embrace it as a gift, an opportunity to draw nearer to the one who loves you beyond measure. You see, my dear friends, as a young Christian warrior, I too was awakened in the depths of night. I was compelled to discern the Spirit's movements, to seek divine direction with a fervent heart. And lo and behold, in that hushed embrace of night, an enlightenment descended upon me like a gentle breeze from the Almighty Himself. It was as if God had switched on a celestial spotlight, illuminating the path before me. His instructions were clear and I embrace them with the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why am I sharing this, you ask? Because I want you to understand that these nocturnal awakenings are not mere coincidences. They're the divine appointments, a divine rendezvous between you and your Creator. When the world slumbers and the night is still, God chooses this time to communicate with you, to impart His wisdom, His guidance, and his love. It's his way of saying, my child, I have something important to share with you. You may be tempted to dismiss these moments as fleeting, insignificant interruptions to your sleep. But my dear brothers and sisters, heed this warning. Ignoring these divine stirrings could rob you of your destiny. These awakenings are not meant to be ignored or brushed aside. They're meant to be embraced cherished and acted upon. In the silence of those early morning hours, the Spirit yearns to speak to you. It longs to share insights that can transform your life, bless your family, and elevate your purpose. These awakenings are not random. They are divine invitations to embark on a journey of spiritual discovery and growth. The Bible reminds us in Proverbs 3, 5-6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. When you wake up at 3 a.m., trust that God is aligning your path, straightening the course of your life, and guiding you towards His divine purpose. At times, the sinister forces of darkness may be at work, trying to cast shadows over your life attempting to thwart your progress or inflict you with afflictions. But remember, God is your ultimate guardian, your heavenly Father who yearns for your well-being. He awakens you to say, My child, it's time to pray. Engage in spiritual warfare. The battles you face are not mere coincidences. Counter the enemy's designs and embrace your divine destiny. God's love for you is profound. When he stirs you from slumber, it's an act of love to shield you from the schemes of Satan. Moreover, those moments of sudden awakening may be God's way of inviting you to worship him, to converse with him, or to encounter him on a deeper level. Think of it this way. Imagine you're a parent with two children. One child only comes to you in times of need or trouble, while the other seeks your presence out of love and longing. Which child's affection do you cherish more deeply? God desires that intimate connection with you, where you seek Him not only in desperation, but out of genuine love and devotion. The stillness of the night is a canvas where your faith can shine the brightest. In those sacred hours, you have the opportunity to deepen your bond with the Creator, to gain clarity on your life's purpose, and to stand resilient against the adversities that seek to undermine your faith. You see, at 3 p.m. on that fateful Good Friday, Christ offered Himself as a sacrifice for our sins. In the grand design of the universe, the devil often seeks to twist what God has ordained, and so he chooses the opposite time, 3 a.m., to orchestrate his misdeeds. But God's faithful, 
They rise at this hour, not out of fear, but out of love. To them, it's not just a prayer. It's a profound connection with the divine. It's a way to say, Lord, I love you, even in the stillness of the night. They view it as a penance, a beautiful sacrifice to show their unwavering devotion. It's a demonstration that even when the world sleeps, their hearts are wide awake in worship. Imagine the world at 3 a.m. The streets are silent. The world dreams. And even the spiritual realm rests. It's a moment when distractions fade away, leaving only you and the Lord. In this sacred solitude, you can hear His voice more clearly, feel His presence more profoundly. Now, let's talk about the Passio Domini, the meditation of Christ's Passion. This powerful practice takes place between Thursday night and Friday afternoon, where souls meditate on every agony, every suffering Christ endured, from His agonizing prayers in Gethsemane to His last breath on the cross. Some choose to stay awake all night, immersed in prayer and contemplation. By waking up at 3 a.m., they're saying, Lord, I want to walk beside you on the path of your suffering. I want to understand the depth of your love for me. And as they pray, they often turn to the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that encompasses their daily needs, their aspirations, and their devotion. It's a prayer that reminds them of God's eternal glory and His infinite power. As they recite, Our Father in Heaven, they're affirming their connection to the Almighty. You see, waking up at 3 a.m. to pray is a gesture of love. It's a commitment to seek God when the world is still silent, when distractions are minimal. It's a declaration that your relationship with the Divine transcends the need for sleep. So, my friends, if you find yourself stirred from slumber at this sacred hour, know that you're not alone. You're a part of a communion that spans time and space, a fellowship of souls who understand the profound beauty of waking up at 3 a.m. to be with God. May this revelation ignite a spark within you. Embrace this divine rendezvous and let it fill your heart with love, hope, and unwavering faith. For this is why God wakes you up at night at 3 a.m., to draw you closer to Him, to bless you with His presence, and to remind you that you are truly loved. Have you ever found yourself wide awake, staring at the ceiling at 3 a.m.? It's more than just a coincidence or a disruption in your sleep pattern. This hour, often shrouded in mystery and folklore, holds a deeper significance than we might realize. In the tapestry of the Bible, the number three weaves itself into many pivotal moments. Jesus' crucifixion at 3 p.m., His resurrection after three days, Jonah's three nights in a whale's belly, Peter's trio of denials, all highlight the profound impact of this number. But what about the other side of 3 p.m.? The quiet, introspective 3 a.m.? Is this the time when the divine whispers to us? Picture this. The world is silent. Distractions are minimal. And it's just you and the ticking clock. This hour can be a divine appointment. A moment for reflection. And yes, even revelation. It's not uncommon to hear stories of people receiving their most profound insights and inspirations during these early hours. But let's also address the elephant in the room. The notion of 3 a.m. being a witching hour or a time of demonic activity. This idea, while popular in folklore, isn't rooted in biblical teaching. However, it does underscore the fact that 3 a.m. stirs something deep within our psyche, something beyond the ordinary. Science offers explanations too. The liver, working diligently between 1 and 3 a.m., or disruptions in our circadian rhythm due to stress, anxiety, or even life changes like menopause. These are valid, rational explanations for our nocturnal awakenings. Yet, they don't entirely account for the spiritual and emotional stirrings many experience at this hour. 
So, what should we do when we find ourselves awake at 3 a.m.? First, embrace it. Use this quiet time for prayer, meditation, or simply to bask in the stillness. It's a rare opportunity for introspection and connection with God, unfettered by the noise of daily life. Remember, our spiritual journey is deeply personal, and these nocturnal moments can be profound times of spiritual growth. Whether it's a call to prayer, a moment of inspiration, He is God. These early morning hours can be a blessing in disguise. As we explore these early hours, let's approach them with curiosity and openness. Whether it's a nudge from the divine, a biological clock reset, or just a chance to enjoy the peace of the night. There's something special about 3 a.m. that beckons us to explore deeper. Waking up at 3 a.m. may not just be a quirk of our sleep cycle. It might be an invitation a sacred moment to connect with God, to listen, and to be inspired. So, the next time you find yourself awake at this hour, take a moment to listen, reflect, and maybe even embrace the quiet guidance that this time offers. Throughout history and across various cultures, the hour of 3 a.m. has held a significant, almost mystical place in our collective consciousness. It's not just a superstition, it's a time when the veil between the physical and spiritual worlds is considered thinnest, a moment ripe for divine encounters and revelations. This isn't about fear or superstition. It's about an invitation to a deeper connection. In Christianity, this hour holds special importance. It's a sacred time, a moment for reflection, prayer, and a deeper understanding of one's life purpose. Waking up at this hour isn't a mere coincidence. It's a gentle whisper from God, an invitation to commune with Him, to listen to what He has to say. So, what does this mean for you, waking up at 3 a.m.? It's an opportunity, a moment to pause and reflect. Perhaps it's God's way of telling you to pray, to seek His guidance, or to simply be still and know that He is God. This time can be a powerful tool for spiritual growth, a moment to gain insight and clarity about your life's journey. But there's more to it. The Bible speaks of this hour as a time of great spiritual activity. It's a time when prayers are powerful, when heaven is listening intently. It's a moment of potential breakthroughs, of divine encounters, and of deep spiritual warfare. By waking up at this hour, you're stepping into a space where you can actively participate in this spiritual realm, engage in prayerful warfare, and seek God's wisdom and guidance. It isn't just about waking up. It's about awakening to a deeper spiritual reality. It's about recognizing that our physical realm is intertwined with the spiritual and that God is always speaking, always reaching out to us, even in the quiet, unassuming hour of 3 a.m., so next time you find yourself awake at this hour, take a moment, listen, pray, reflect. It might just be the most important moment of your day, a divine appointment set by God Himself. It's an opportunity to deepen your faith, to understand your purpose, and to align yourself with God's will. In this journey of faith, every moment, every hour is significant. And the hour of 3 a.m.? The Bible, in its timeless wisdom, illuminates this mystery. 1 John 5.19 whispers to us that while we reside in God's light, the world around us is shrouded in spiritual battles. It's a stark reminder that, even in our most vulnerable state of slumber, the forces of darkness are tirelessly weaving their web of chaos. Now consider the parable of the wheat and tares from Matthew 13, 25. As the farmer sleeps, his enemy sows weeds among the wheat. This isn't an agricultural lesson. It's a metaphor for our lives. In the stillness of night, when our guard is down, adversities and temptations creep in, attempting to sow seeds of despair and confusion in our lives. But here's the revelation. These midnight awakenings are not interruptions. 
their divine interventions. God, in His infinite wisdom and love, rouses us from our sleep. It's as if He's gently tapping on your shoulder, whispering, Awaken, my child, and fortify your spirit. It's an invitation to engage in a nocturnal vigil, to stand guard over your soul and the souls of those you love. This wake-up call is an act of celestial guardianship, a reminder that even in the unseen battles, you are not alone. Think of these moments as a secret rendezvous with the divine. In the quiet of the night, free from distractions, you're offered a rare opportunity for introspection and spiritual connection. It's a time to fortify your inner fortress through prayer, reflection, and communion with God. This is not just a moment of defense, but of growth and deepening faith. Now, let's demystify the enigma of the 3 a.m. awakening. It's not just a random occurrence, but a spiritual signal. Ancient wisdom and modern experiences converge at this hour, often considered a time of heightened spiritual activity. Waking up at this hour is seen as a call to spiritual arms, an invitation to engage with the divine mysteries and embrace a deeper understanding of your life's journey. So, the next time you find yourself awake at this mysterious hour, stay calm and listen. What is God whispering to your heart? Perhaps it's a call to pray, to meditate, to reflect on your path, or simply to bask in the peace of His presence. This is not just a moment of wakefulness. It's a divine appointment, a sacred encounter with the one who guides your steps. These nightly awakenings are more than mere disturbances. They're messages of love and protection, reminders of a greater purpose, and invitations to connect with the divine. Embrace these moments, for in them lies the opportunity to grow, to strengthen your faith, and to walk in closest communication with God. Let's cherish these quiet hours, for they are gifts wrapped in the mystery of the night, waiting to be unwrapped by a heart willing to listen and respond. In the stillness of the night, when distractions are minimal, God chooses this time to speak to us. It's a sacred moment, a time when He alerts us to dangers we're unaware of or guides us towards paths we need to tread. However, this is also a time when the devil tries his best to distract us. He lures us with the comfort of our bed, whispering that prayer can wait, that there's no urgency. But this is a deceptive trap. Remember the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane? They too struggled to stay awake to pray, just before a significant moment in Jesus' life. This wasn't a mere coincidence. It was a spiritual battle, one where staying awake to pray was crucial. When God wakes you at 3 a.m., it's not to disrupt your sleep, but to arm you spiritually. In those quiet hours, your prayers have the power to dismantle the enemy's plans. The devil fears this. He knows that a prayerful response is potent enough to thwart his schemes. That's why he counters with sleepiness hoping to keep you too comfortable to rise and pray. Consider this. If you woke up at 3 a.m. to check your phone, you'd likely not feel as sleepy. But when it's time to pray, the battle intensifies. It's a spiritual tug of war, with the enemy on one side trying to pull you back into the depths of sleep, and God gently nudging you toward a moment of powerful spiritual connection. God's wake-up call is a protective measure. It's His way of steering us away from potential pitfalls or guiding us towards decisions that align with His will. Sometimes, these wake-up calls are not just about prayer. They can be revelations, insights, or divine wisdom imparted to help us navigate our lives better. In these moments, God might be alerting you to something crucial a decision you need to make, a danger you need to avoid, or a path you need to follow. It's a personal, intimate conversation with the divine, 
an opportunity to align our will with His. So, the next time you find yourself waking up at 3 a.m., view it not as an inconvenience, but as a divine appointment. Resist the temptation to roll over and go back to sleep. Instead, sit up, pray, and listen. These moments are golden opportunities for spiritual growth, for gaining clarity, and for engaging in a deeper, more meaningful dialogue with God. Think of it as a personal invitation from God to engage in something extraordinary. Maybe it's a call to start that project you've been shelving, to write that book, to paint that masterpiece. Or maybe it's a deeper calling to spend time in prayer, to meditate, to connect with Him on a profound level. Now, I know what you're thinking. Waking up at 3 a.m.? That's a disruption, an inconvenience. But what if it's a gateway to something transformative? A moment of clarity, a revelation, a time when God imparts wisdom and guidance directly to your heart. Remember, in these quiet hours, the noise of the world fades away, leaving a clear channel between you and the divine. It's a time when God reveals insights, answers to prayers, or even warns you of challenges ahead. It's a time of spiritual alertness, where the veil between the physical and the spiritual realms seems thinner. So, next time you find yourself awake at this mystical hour, don't toss and turn in frustration. Instead, embrace the silence. Listen closely. Maybe it's God's way of saying, I have something important to tell you, something that can't wait until morning. Take a moment to journal your thoughts, your prayers, the stirrings of your heart. You might be surprised at the revelations that come in these quiet hours. This isn't just about refusing laziness. It's about embracing a divine opportunity, a celestial whisper in the dead of night. As you ponder this, I leave you with a question. What might God be trying to tell you in these silent, sacred hours? Are you ready to listen, to act, to transform? We often find ourselves sailing towards the horizon with hopes high. But amid the voyage, storms are inevitable. It's in these tempests that God's whisper echoes through the roaring waves, guiding our helm if we but listen. The divine signals often come subtly, yet profoundly altering the course of our lives toward His divine shores. Realizing these signs is akin to having a compass in the disorienting storms of life. Often, we are entangled in the day's hustle, the clatter of worldly worries drowning the soft whispers of divine guidance. Our hearts being the antennae to God's signals, when shrouded with worldly concerns, often miss the divine transmissions. Yet, the Lord's attempts to communicate never cease. He's continually knocking at the door of our hearts, awaiting an invite to guide us through life's maze. Take a pause, delve into the silence, and in the quietude, you'll find God's whispers resonating. His words are the light amidst darkness, a guiding path amidst confusion. The earnest prayers, the time spent in His word, and the quiet moments of contemplation are the channels through which He communicates. The more we attune our hearts to His frequency, the clearer His guiding signals become. Reflect upon the words in James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. A plea for wisdom is a call God never ignores. It's a step towards aligning ourselves with His divine blueprint. Remember, God's communication isn't confined to an audible voice. It's in the synchronicities, the coincidences, and the inexplicable peace amidst chaos. It's in the sudden burst of insight, the unexpected help, and the invisible yet palpable cloak of strength in adversity. Consider the profound simplicity of Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. 
The verse doesn't merely depict a passive God knocking, but emphasizes our role in opening the door. It's a divine synergy where our willingness to listen meets His endless communication. Life is an expedition, and every day is a step towards the unknown. But with God's whispers as our guiding light, the unknown is nothing to dread. It's a realm where divine surprises await, where every challenge morphs into a stepping stone, and every setback is a setup for a comeback, orchestrated by the grand conductor above. So, let us unclutter our hearts, tune into His divine frequency, and navigate through life with God's whispers as our compass. The signs are always there. It's upon us to notice, to listen, and to follow. And as we do, we'll find ourselves not merely surviving the storms, but thriving amidst them, growing, evolving, and becoming the epitome of God's marvelous plans. Now, envision a night where dreams paint vivid narratives that resonate with your reality or perhaps divulge a heavenly insight. These are not mere figments of imagination, but divine illustrations embodied with messages waiting to be unraveled. As stated in Job chapter 33, verses 15 through 16, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings. The beauty of God's communication is that it's boundless transcending the conventional. It may arrive in the form of an unexpected obstacle, compelling you to pause, reflect, and perhaps change course. This obstruction isn't a barricade, but a divine detour, directing you towards a path you may not have considered. And in that path, you may find a profound essence of truth, akin to the wisdom found in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called the courting to His purpose. The resonance of divine messages may even echo through melodies, creating a harmonious conduit between the earthly and the divine. Music, often termed as the language of the soul, can become a medium through which God's wisdom is imparted. Through lyrics that speak truth, melodies that touch the heart, you find a reflection of the divine essence. Moreover, the scriptures are a perennial stream of divine discourse. Through the verses, God speaks, guiding us through life's labyrinth. When we immerse ourselves in prayer, we engage in a sacred dialogue where God's responses manifest through the wisdom that envelops our thoughts or the inexplicable peace that calms our storm. God's messages are all around, in the rustle of leaves, in the serenity of silence, and in the clamor of worldly chaos. Through discernment and a heart inclined to the divine, we can unveil these messages, aligning our steps with the divine blueprint. So, as you traverse through life's journey, remain attuned to these divine signposts. They are God's way of nurturing, guiding, and preparing us for the journey that lies ahead. Each sign, a whisper from the heavens. Each insight, a step closer to the divine embrace. There are moments when an indescribable urge blossoms within, urging you to act upon something you've been pondering. It's as though a divine discontent settles in until you heed that heavenly hint. That's God articulating His will, nudging you closer to your destiny. He converses in a language of love, a language that's innately etched in our spirits. The scriptures affirm this beautiful interaction in John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus declares, My sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. It's a divine rendezvous where the silence speaks volumes, where our souls resonate with the Almighty's whispers. Now, you might wonder, how do I discern this divine dialogue amidst this cacophony of life? It's by fostering a tender receptivity a heart attuned to the gentle nudges and celestial cues. God's communications are not always wrapped in thunderous revelations. Often they are soft, subtle whispers, a sudden clarity amidst confusion, a peace that pervades in decision-making or an inexplicable joy in moments of sorrow. God's love for us is boundless and His desire to guide us is relentless. He's meticulously designed a divine blueprint for each one of us, a narrative that's waiting to unfold. 
and he invites us to co-author this glorious story with him. Our part, to listen attentively, to respond promptly, and to trust wholeheartedly. God never meant for us to traverse this earthly journey alone. He's always reaching out, always communicating. It's just a matter of tuning our hearts to his frequency. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, God extends a timeless invitation. Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. It's a call to engage in a lifelong dialogue with the Creator to unlock the treasures of wisdom awaiting us. As the scriptures affirm, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them and they follow me. John chapter 10 verse 27. But how does one discern these signs? How do we tune our hearts to resonate with the divine frequency? Each day brings forth signs, some subtle, others profound. It could be a whisper in the wind, the warmth of the sun on a cold morning, or the serendipity of encounters that guide our steps towards the path of righteousness. It's a divine choreography, meticulously orchestrated to guide, to comfort, to reassure. Take a moment. Reflect on the seemingly coincidental occurrences in your life. The unexpected call from an old friend just when you needed to hear a familiar voice, or the sudden appearance of a guiding scripture that addressed the turmoil stirring within. These aren't mere coincidences, but God's voice, His way of communicating His love, His guidance, His assurance to navigate through the turbulence of life. And then there's the sanctity of silence. We're in the stillness. The soft whispers of God resonate within the chambers of our heart, echoing the profound truth of His love and guidance. It's in these moments of divine quietude where the world fades and all that remains is the sacred conversation between your heart and the divine. Let's delve into the realm of prayer, a sacred communion where the heart speaks and the soul listens. It's an intimate dialogue where words transcend the earthly realm, reaching the divine throne. As we meditate upon the scriptures, each word unveils a layer of divine wisdom, each verse a sign, guiding us towards a life of righteousness and purpose. Engage in a soulful dialogue with God, be it through prayer, through the scriptures, or through the divine signs manifesting in our day-to-day -day life. Cherish these divine interactions, for they are the compass guiding us toward a life adorned with divine purpose and profound joy. So, as you tread upon the journey of life, embrace the signs, for they are God's way of saying, I am with you always. Embrace the divine communication, for it's the beacon of hope amidst the storms, the melody of love that tunes our heart to the rhythm of divine grace. Let the words of Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 say, Call to me and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Inspire you to seek, to listen, and to embrace the divine communication that ceaselessly orchestrating the melody of your life. In the scriptures, we see countless individuals who were guided by God's signs. Moses at the burning bush received a sign that embarked him on a journey of liberation. Similarly, our lives are sprinkled with such signs, awaiting our recognition. Yet, how often do we pause, reflect, and acknowledge these signs? The common misconception is that God's communications are grandiose, but in truth, they are often found in simplicity and silence. It's the gentle tug at your heart when you're about to make a decision, the inexplicable peace amidst a storm, or the sudden insight during a quiet reflection. However, the clamor of blame, the accusations we hurl towards the heavens during adversities, deafens us to God's whisper. We become ensnared in a blame game, forgetting that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Our accusations act as barriers, making the divine whispers fainter. It's essential to cultivate a listening heart, a heart willing to be still amidst life's storms, a heart that seeks not to blame, but to understand, not to demand, but to listen. It's in this stillness that we can discern the signs God places along our path. In the Gospel of John, Jesus beautifully articulates, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. 
John chapter 10, verse 27. This profound verse encapsulates the essence of recognizing God's signs. It's about fostering a relationship, a divine connection that allows us to navigate through life with God's whispers as our guiding light. Life's journey is filled with opportunities for divine interaction. Every challenge, every joy, and even the mundane moments are laden with signs from above, awaiting our acknowledgement. As we traverse through life's maze, let's strive to attune our hearts to the gentle whispers, to the signs shown by God, leading us closer to His divine plan. Through His attunement, we not only enrich our earthly journey, but forge a deeper connection with the divine, nurturing a life filled with grace, wisdom, and unshakable faith. Remember the biblical account of young Samuel. He was beckoned by God's voice, a soft utterance that echoed through the silence of the night. It took a discerning heart to understand that the call was a divine one. Similar was the case with Saul, whose encounter with Christ was a turning point in his life, transforming him into the Apostle Paul, a fervent messenger of God's Word. Such divine interactions are not mere relics of the past, but are profound realities waiting to be experienced. It's about cultivating a listening heart, an observant eye, and a receptive spirit. These signs, soft whispers, and life's orchestrated events are God's way of reaching out and guiding us toward a path of spiritual growth and enlightenment. This journey of discerning God's communications isn't a solitary one. By immersing ourselves in the scriptures, engaging in heartfelt prayer, and fostering a community of believers, we create a conducive environment to perceive the divine signs. As it said in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. The road to spiritual awakening is laden with divine signs waiting to be discovered. It's a beckoning towards a higher calling a journey that promises an embrace of heavenly peace amidst earthly chaos. So, as you navigate through life's intricacies, keep your heart open and your spirit attuned, and you might just hear God's whisper guiding you through. If you have made it this far and you have been blessed, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. In the quiet hours of the night, when the world sleeps and the stars keep watch, there is a sacred space, a time that seems to stand still. It's in these early hours, around 3 a.m., that something extraordinary happens. It's a time when the veil between the divine and the mundane things are lifted, and we find ourselves more open to spiritual encounters. This isn't just any time. It's a time marked by unique spiritual significance a period that the Bible subtly alludes to in various passages. Imagine this, the world is silent. The distractions of the day have faded, and in this stillness, your heart begins to beat in rhythm with a higher calling. It's 3 a.m., and you find yourself gently nudged awake. This isn't a mere interruption of your sleep. It's a divine invitation. The Bible writes, In the night my soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligently. Isaiah 26, 9. This longing isn't just a feeling. It's a spiritual reality. A moment when God seems to whisper directly to our hearts. Think of Jacob, alone and wrestling in the night. His struggle was not just with man, but with God. It was in the solitude and the darkness that he found his true strength and identity. Like Jacob, we often encounter our deepest spiritual moments, not in the busyness of daylight, but in the quiet wrestlings of the night. This time, the fourth watch, is when miracles unfold in the Bible. It's when Jesus walked on water, calming the sea and the fears of his disciples. It's a time for miracles in our lives, too. It's when we can step out in faith, walking towards Jesus amidst our own storms. In this sacred hour, we're invited to connect with God on a deeper level. Psalm 119, 147 says, I rise before dawn and cry for help. I hope in your words. This hope is more than just a feeling. It's an active, living faith that finds its voice in the stillness of the early morning. This isn't about losing sleep. 
It's about finding purpose. It's about heeding a spiritual call that stirs us to seek God earnestly. Awake, O harp and lyre, I will awake the dawn. Psalm 108, 2. This isn't just about waking up. It's about awakening something within us, a desire to pursue God with our whole heart. So why does God wake us up at 3 a.m.? It's not to disrupt our rest, but to offer us something more restorative than sleep. It's an invitation to experience His presence, to hear His voice, and to gain clarity and direction for our lives. It's a time to lay our burdens down, to find peace in His presence, and to be filled with hope and strength for the journey ahead. Let's cherish this quiet rendezvous with the Almighty, where the whispers of God are more audible than ever. Let's consider the story of young Samuel, this tale unfolds in the quiet of the night, where God's voice breaks through the silence, reaching out to Samuel. This isn't just a story about a prophet. It's a reminder of the intimacy of God's communication with us. At 3 a.m., away from the day's distractions, our hearts are more open, our minds more receptive. It's a time when God can impart wisdom, revelations, and a sense of His deep, unconditional love. This hour is not just a random moment in the night. It's a divine appointment. Consider Psalm 42.8. Yet the Lord will command His loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night His song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. Which beautifully articulates how God's presence encompasses us day and night. The night is not a time of fear or uncertainty, but a canvas for the celestial symphony of God's love. It's an opportunity for transformational encounters, for heartfelt prayers and worship that transcends mere ritual. Some have associated 3 a.m. with darkness, even calling it the witching hour. There's a belief that supernatural forces are more potent at this time. However, this perception overlooks the omnipresent power of Christ. In Luke 10:19, Jesus says, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Our prayers, our connection with God, isn't bound by time or swayed by myths. Furthermore, Ephesians 6.11 reminds us to don the armor of God, to stand firm against any adversarial forces. It's not about fearing the night, but embracing it as a sacred space for divine communication. The night and its quiet are not a ground for fear, but a sanctuary for peace and reflection. In the Gospel of Matthew, when Jesus walks on water, His disciples initially mistake Him for a ghost. This moment symbolizes our own sometimes misguided fears at night, misinterpreting the presence of God as something to be afraid of. When God wakes you up at 3 a.m., He's inviting you into a moment of divine encounter. It's a time to lay down the burdens you've carried throughout the day, to surrender your worries and fears, and to receive His guidance and comfort. In Psalm 119, 62, David says, At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. This verse reflects the essence of those nighttime awakenings, a call to gratitude, reflection, and a recognition of God's presence in our lives. Moreover, these early morning hours can be a time for intercessory prayer. Just as Esther called for a fast at night before approaching the king for her people's salvation, our prayers in the stillness can intercede for the needs of those around us and bring about change in the spiritual realm. Perhaps in these quiet hours, God's also reminding us of His constant vigilance and care. As Psalm 121.4 reassures us, He who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Even when we're unaware, God's actively working in our lives protecting and guiding us. So, the next time you find yourself awake at 3 a.m., consider it a divine appointment. It's a time to be still and know that He is God. Embrace the quiet, listen for His voice, and let His peace fill your heart. In these moments, you'll find the strength for the day ahead, wisdom for the decisions you face, and comfort in knowing you're never alone. These wakeful nights are not just random occurrences. 
They're opportunities for deeper connection with our Creator. They're moments to cherish, to learn, and to grow. In the embrace of the night, let your soul be rejuvenated and your faith be strengthened. Remember, God's timing is perfect, and His purpose in waking you is always for your good and His glory. Consider the biblical reference in Psalm 91, 5-7. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Assures us of God's protection against the terrors of the night. This verse isn't just about comfort, it's about empowerment. It reminds us that in the seemingly daunting hours of the night, we're not vulnerable. We're actually at our strongest, standing guard in prayer, aligning our hearts and minds with God's will. Embracing the sacred hour is an act of love and devotion. It's a testament to your commitment to God, showing Him that your desire for His presence surpasses even the sweet allure of sleep. This sacrifice, this act of waking up at such an unconventional hour, is your personal offering to God, a demonstration that your relationship with Him is your utmost priority. When the world sleeps, distractions are minimal. The spiritual realm is calm, and your prayers ascend to God like a fragrant offering, unimpeded by the chaos of daily life. In the solitude, you're granted clarity. The voice of God, often a gentle whisper, becomes clearer, guiding you, comforting you, and revealing the depths of His love and plans for you. Engaging in prayer at 3 a.m. is more powerful than a ritual. It's a journey deeper into your spiritual life. It's an exploration of the intimate relationship you share with God. You begin to understand His character more deeply, experiencing His love and grace in new dimensions. And here's the most beautiful part. God anticipates these moments with you. Imagine the Creator of the universe waiting eagerly to meet you, to listen to you, to speak to you. You don't need an alarm clock for this appointment. God's love is your wake-up call. Waking up at 3 a.m. to pray is a unique and profound practice. It's a time to engage in spiritual warfare, to offer a personal sacrifice of love to God, and to experience His presence in a powerful, unobstructed manner. This hour is not just a moment in time. It's a divine invitation to deepen your relationship with God, to hear His voice more clearly, and to align yourself with His will. So the next time you find yourself awake at 3 a.m., see it as a call to something greater, a call to be in the presence of the Almighty in the quiet, sacred hours of the night. The depth of Lamentations 3, 22 to 23, which says, His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This verse reminds us that each day, including its earliest hours, brings a fresh outpouring of God's mercy and love. When you wake up at 3 a.m., it's as if God is providing you with a blank canvas, a new beginning, inviting you to paint your worries, hopes, and dreams in prayer. These pre-dawn hours are also a sanctuary for confronting what lies deep within us. Here in the quiet, you can bring your fears, your doubts, and even your failures into the light of His grace. It's a time for spiritual detox, a cleansing of the soul, where you can lay down your burdens and feel the weight lift off your shoulders. In this divine solitude, you're reminded that you're never alone in your journey. God's grace is like a river, constantly flowing, ready to renew and refresh your spirit. Moreover, this time is ideal for immersing yourself in the scriptures. With a clear mind, free from the day's clutter, God's word shines like a beacon. In these quiet moments, the Bible isn't just a book. It becomes a living dialogue between you and God. The words leap off the page, offering guidance, comfort, and a wisdom that resonates deep within your heart. The Lord desires to meet you in a place where the world's distractions cannot reach. It's a divine appointment, a time set aside for you to grow, to heal, and to be enveloped in His love. Embrace these moments, 
Let them be a time of spiritual awakening where you can reflect, recharge, and reconnect with the one who loves you unconditionally. As we conclude, let's bow our heads in a short prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the quiet of the early morning, for the peace it brings, and for the opportunity to be alone with you. Help us to listen to your voice, to be guided by your word, and to feel your presence in every moment of stillness. Amen. The whisper of divine selection is subtle, yet the signs are often inscribed in the fabric of our daily lives. It's an invitation to a higher purpose, a nudge towards a path of righteousness and truth. When the Spirit of God reaches out, it doesn't hand over a detailed roadmap, but rather it sprinkles clues along your journey, murmurs of guidance in the stillness of your heart. These are not mere coincidences, but divine nudges pushing you towards a noble destiny. Amidst a world masked in pretense, you stand out with a heart sheathed in authenticity. Your essence is one of truth, incapable of molding into a facade. When faced with discord, your spirit nudges you away, rather than compelling you to veil your discomfort and dishonesty. Your authenticity is not just a trait, it's a divine signal, a marker of being chosen. It's God's light shining through, a reflection of His truth in a world often blanketed in deceit. Your spirit craves genuine interactions, repelled by falsehood and superficiality. This isn't merely a preference, but a divine directive aligning you with individuals of sincere hearts, steering you away from the tarnished. It's a celestial compass guiding your interactions, fostering connections that are rooted in honesty and love. Your inherent ability to discern sincerity from deceit is not just intuition. It's a divine endowment, a gift bestowed upon the chosen to navigate through the veils of deceit that shroud the world. This discernment is a beacon of truth in a realm where falsehood often reigns. It's a glimpse of the divine wisdom imparted upon you, a stepping stone towards fulfilling your heavenly ordained purpose. In your heart, a profound desire for righteousness blossoms, a longing to embody the virtues that please the divine, a pursuit that springs not from obligation, but from a heart overflown with gratitude for God's boundless love and grace. Your obedience is an ode to His mercy, a testament to His magnificent presence in your life. It's an exhilarating realization to be chosen. Every sign, every gentle nudge is a stitch in the grand tapestry of God's divine plan for you. As you heed these signs, you walk closer towards your godly purpose. And each step is a melody of gratitude, each breath a prayer of thanks scriptures to meditate upon. 1 Peter 2.9 But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. John 15.16 You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Your divine selection is a journey of faith, a voyage towards embodying God's love and truth in a world yearning for hope. With every sign you heed, with every step you take towards righteousness, you echo the celestial melody of being chosen. You manifest God's glorious plan in the earthly realm. You, beloved, are not meant to merely exist but to live a life full of purpose, etched in the grand tapestry of God's divine plan. The mundane routines of life can never satiate your soul's yearning for something profound, something divine. A sacred spark within refuses to be extinguished by life's monotonies. Unlike many, your heart pulsates to the rhythm of a higher calling, a divine echo that resounds through the valleys of routine urging you towards the mountain of God's purpose. Your path is illuminated by a celestial light 
guiding you through the shadows of the commonplace towards a life less ordinary, a life of divine purpose. Oh, how marvelous is this light that seeks to break forth from within you. The iridescent rays of God's glory seek to shatter the gray of the mundane that seeks to envelop your being. Your journey, dear one, is not devoid of trials, for the furnace of affliction is purposed to refine, to mold, and to prepare you for your divine destiny. Your battles are not a sign of abandonment, but of divine indication of your selection. For it's through the crucible of challenges that your spirit is fortified, your faith deepened, and your capacity for empathy and wisdom expanded. And when the storm rages, Remember, the master of the wind and waves has chosen you, not for a life of ease, but for a life of overcoming. With every trial overcome, you emerge not just as a beacon of hope to the weary, but as a living testimony to the power of a life yielded to the divine call. Your narrative is not an echo of the ordinary, but a melody of the divine. And as you stride forth in the path he has ordained, you'll find that every experience, every challenge faced is but a grand stroke of the master's brush on the canvas of your life, painting a masterpiece of his grace and glory. In every season, may your heart resound with the Apostle Paul's affirmation in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This, beloved, is the hallmark of a chosen one. Your life, a radiant display of God's redemptive power, is destined to leave an indelible imprint of hope, faith, and love in a world yearning for the touch of the divine. The seeds of this divine choosing blossom through the fertile grounds of love, a love that knows no bounds, that dances in the purity of selfless service, in the joy of extending one's hand to another, regardless of the color of their skin the language they speak, or the road they've traversed. This love mirrors the boundless love of the divine, a testament to the river of compassion flowing through the chosen one's heart, nurturing the gardens of hope and peace in the hearts they touch. And then there's a fervor, a sacred fire burning bright, fueled by the good news of salvation through Christ. This fervor isn't about a blind allegiance, but a profound understanding, an experiential knowing that echoes through the canyons of the heart, singing the melodies of grace. It's a fervor that seeks not personal glory, but the joy of seeing a heart find its way home to the embrace of divine love, to the sweet surrender in the arms of faith. The signs of being chosen are divine fingerprints etched not by mortal hands, but by the tender loving touch of the Holy Spirit, guiding, nurturing, molding the heart in the divine furnace of life's experiences. It's not a badge of honor worn, but a humble acknowledgement of the workings of grace in one's life. And with every challenge faced, every storm weathered, the chosen ones become lighthouses amidst life's turbulent seas. Through their trials, they unravel the threads of wisdom, knitting a safety net for souls adrift, illuminating the path of hope, faith, and perseverance. Every ordeal they transcend is a stepping stone, paving the way for others, a beacon of resilience and trust in the divine plan. In the quiet surrender to the divine will, in the heart's longing to serve, in the gentle touch of compassion, in the fervent passion from the gospel's grace, lies the beauty of being chosen. It's a journey not of grandiose displays, but of simple, humble service, of being a living testament to Christ's eternal message of love and salvation. The essence of being chosen lies not in grandiosity, but in a humble, profound mission nestled in the heart of divine love. It's a call to embody the celestial light amidst earthly turbidity, a quest that's as humbling as it is ennobling. A gentle breeze of divine assurance stirs within you when you're chosen. It nudges you to embrace a path less trodden, yet laden with a silent, profound promise of fulfillment that's beyond the ephemeral. 
It's a path where your heart resonates with the truth that's as ancient as the stars, yet as fresh as a dawn awaiting to unveil. As a chosen one, the essence of divine love seeks to manifest through your being in gestures that heal, words that inspire, in actions that ignite the flames of hope in hearts weary and lost. It's about being a vessel through which the rivers of divine grace flow into the barren landscapes of human hearts, nurturing seeds of hope, faith, and love. This is not a journey of perfection, but of sincere endeavor, a dance of grace amidst human frailties. It's about rising each time life's tumults attempt to thwart your quest with a heart that's willing, a spirit that's undeterred. The hallmark of the chosen lies in a heart that seeks not its own, but the blossoming of life around. It's in the willingness to be a sanctuary of peace amidst tumult, a bearer of light amidst gloom. It's in the silent, profound knowing that every act imbued with love is a step towards the divine orchestration of a higher, grander scheme. Your quest for truth is not a solitary endeavor, but a sacred journey that reflects the yearning of many. It's a beacon that beckons the seekers, the dreamers, the weary wanderers towards the shores of divine grace. When you look around and find a world set in its ways, yet your spirit yearns for something more, something profound, that's the whisper of a celestial melody only you can hear. You're not merely passing through life. You're delving into its core, seeking a higher understanding, echoing the sentiments of those who are chosen for a divine mission. You might find yourself as the one who stands apart in a family portrait, your essence vibrating at a frequency distinct from the rest. Your soul echoes with a divine discontent, a yearning for something beyond the mundane. When the world around you moves in unison in one direction, your heart pulls you towards another, guided by a compass only you hold. The differences you notice might stretch from your world views to your aspirations, and they're not a divide, but a sign of divine design. And yes, there are moments of solitude, times when the road less traveled seems a lonely one. But remember, the chosen ones are often carved in solitude their metal tested in the silence of their hearts before they rise to the melody of their divine calling. With a heart attuned to a higher realm, you're gifted with a unique lens to view life, a perspective nurtured by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's through this divine companionship that you draw the strength and grace to traverse the path laid out for you. The mantle of being chosen is an honor intertwined with a noble responsibility. Your life is a melody, harmonizing with the divine orchestration, contributing to the celestial symphony. As you walk in alignment with the higher calling, with every step in obedience to the divine will, you're crafting a legacy of faith, hope, and love. Scriptures echo the sentiment in 1 Peter 2.9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The journey of the Chosen One is a voyage of discovery, of embracing the divine blueprint, and of resonating with a purpose that transcends the earthly realm. Your narrative is an inspiring testament, a beacon of hope to others that with faith, courage, and divine guidance, the path of the Chosen is a beautiful, fulfilling, and impactful adventure.